fight. We are going five five minute rounds. For the WEC Bantamweight Championship of the World. This should be explosive. Chicago, we welcome you inside the UIC Pavilion in Chicago, Illinois, for World Extreme Cage Fighting. The WEC is available on your TV by the SAP channel. Hello, everyone. Todd Harris, glad to have you with us here in Chicago on a beautiful spring evening. And we have got a great show for you. A belt is on the line in the Bantamweight division. I bring in my colleague, the champ, Frank Mir. Well, you said it before, Miguel Angel Torres, quite possibly pound for pound, the best MMA fighter in the world. But he will have his hands full tonight with a Japanese fighter, Takeya Mizugaki. Right, Miguel Torres is one of the best fighters in the world, pound for pound, the best in this weight class. But he doesn't have an easy task ahead of him. They brought in Mizaki, who's one of the best, his top five fighter in the world in this weight class, and rightfully so. Mizaki has excellent hands. He's here a great striker. He uses all kinds of boxing skills at different angles, and he's no slouch at the submission game, so it's going to make for a very good fight for Miguel Torres. But she's going to need all those skills. Here, Miguel is one of the best strikers there is. Submission skills are unbelievable, and he just has killer instinct to go after his opponents from all different angles. He is one of the best fighters in the world right now, pound for pound. Well, this Coming up next, the main event of the night, WEC Bantamweight World Champion Miguel Angel Torres takes on Takeya Mizugaki. That's next when we return to Chicago, Illinois. And in Chicago, Illinois, World Extreme Cage Fighting invades the Midwest at the UIC Pavilion. We are down to the main event, but first let's recap the Bantamweight division. Miguel Angel Torres, of course, our champion with a record of 35 and 1. He is on a 16 fight win streak. This young man, Brian Bowles, has an impressive record of 7 0. He is also in this. You got to remember the man that is fighting tonight, Takeya Mizugaki. He'll go head to head with Miguel Torres in moments. And Jeff Kern, Joseph Benavides. We just saw a great war. And don't forget, Dominic Cruz also in this class. He is now 13 and 1. Kerr, we just saw, ran his record 31, 11 and 1. And Joseph Benavides, who trains obviously with Uriah Faber, he is certainly a star on the rise. But the fight that we've been waiting for here in the Windy City, Miguel Angel Torres puts his belt on the line in the Bantamweight division. This young man can do it all. And Frank, you know maybe better than anyone, pound for pound might be the best fighter in the MMA world. He has my vote for it. I feel that right now with his record, and in the level of competition you have at the, inside the Bantamweight class, he has a strong vote for being one of the best fighters in the world pound for pound. He's a great striker. He finishes people with his hands, kicks, phenomenal submission artist, a truly a black belt on the ground and in the ring, in the cage. He's just, he's a complete package, and he's a vicious fighter on top of that, so he has all these skills with great killer instincts. He comes from East Chicago, Indiana, just about 30 miles away. He brings an opponent in here from Japan, Takeya Mizugaki, very talented striker, and everything he said this week is he wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Torres. And I think that's his best bet. Mizugaki is a great striker. I mean, he's, he's top five in the world for a reason, and it's his hands. You see here, he does have submission skills. He's well-rounded. You don't get to the level of competition and don't fight in a title fight without being well-rounded. But the one area that he poses the biggest threat to Miguel or where he has his best chance of winning is with those heavy hands. He has a powerful right hand and a great left hook. All right, we are set to go for the main event here in Chicago, Illinois. Let the attack begin. The champ says American pride is on the line as Miguel Torres looks to keep the WEC belt in the States. But Mizugaki has other plans, and he wants to make this U.S. debut a sweet one. I hate when these guys from Japan come out here and think they're better than us, better than me. I'm going to show them what a real American champion is made of. I'm the type of fighter who never look to win the fight in the decision. I always look for a knockout, and I believe that's what makes me an exciting fighter. Kim Mizugaki is coming into my home, into my house. It's going to be a hard fight for him. You know, he's going to have to fight the crowd it's the first time in the U.S. He's got to fight me. I'm not here to play games. I'm here to put guys away and then fight the next one. I'm glad he's confident, but I have only one reason to be here, which is to take that belt home. So if you think he can knock me out, well, let him think that way. Um, is guy, I think he's going to come and take my belt, and he's not. He's going to come in here, and he's going to get knocked out. And they are on 
their feet at the UIC Pavilion here in Chicago as the challenger, Takeya Mizugaki, from Japan, makes his way inside the arena to a very hostile crowd. Now, Frank, it's one thing to say you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Miguel Torres. It's another thing to be able to do it. I think most people in the MMA world feel this kid can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Miguel Torres. You know what, though? I mean, he, he does have that... From what I've seen on his fights, you know, obviously we're never going to see him live here. But this is his debut, a very tough debut here in the U.S. with the WEC. But from the highlight reels and from the fights that I've done research on him, his hands are very good. He doesn't only just throw good combinations, he's naturally a very powerful puncher. So he can hit hard. Hit hard enough that if he catches just about anybody, he's going to drop them. So going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Miguel Torres is not the bad idea. Because I don't think he really is going to do as well on the ground as he could on his feet. As we take a look at our Bud Light fighter's ability for Takeya Mizugaki, he is very aggressive, he likes to stand, but he does have that dangerous ground and pound aspect to his attack. Well, I mean, that's just an extension of his powerful punches. He gets in good position on the ground, and he hits really hard. And on top of that, I think that's how he set up a lot of his submissions. He hits people so hard on their feet and stuns a lot of his opponents. You'll see guys would rather go ahead and belly down on their hands and knees and take more punches in the face. And that's where he sinks in, rear naked choke, and is able to impose a few of his submissions from that area. Takeya Mizugaki making his U.S. fighting debut. He said he has been to the United States one other time, and that was back when he watched Torres defend his belt. So he knows what the champ can do. We'll see what he can do now when he gets inside the cage, the WC for the first time. is inside the WEC cage for the first time, and now we await the champion. And there is the champ, fighting out of East Chicago, Indiana. Just 30 miles down the road, Miguel Angel Torres hasn't lost a bout in five years, Frank. And it's not like he's fighting slouches. No, I mean, he's now competing in the WEC and, you know, tons of underground fights against some very tough guys. You know, Miguel Torres is just a complete package right now. He's vicious from every position. If you stand up with him, he can knock you out. If you take him down, off his back, he can submit you. He can hurt you from almost any aspect of the cage. There's really nowhere you can hide from him. And on top of that, it, like he just has that. You see some guys with very good skill sets to go out there and do fights, and they're winning fights. Miguel Torres has that extra killer instinct that a lot of guys sometimes lack, where he is viciously looking to hurt you at all times. Very composed under fire, never seems to ever be stressed or hurried in any of his fights. Very well composed champion. He is a master at figuring things out. If he gets into a situation where his attack is not working, he will change his attack, and he does it on the fly. As we take a look at our Bud Light fighter's ability, but where do you start with this guy? The superlatives come fast and furious. Third title defense, 22 wins by submission. The last two wins by TKO. And you think about the last three guys he's beaten. Manny Tapia, Yoshiro Maeda, and Chase Beebe. There's a reason why you're getting voted up. It's not just how good you are, but it's also the level of competition you're beating. He's facing top-level guys every time. I mean, why could you not? He's a world champion now. Every fight he's going to have is a world-class fight. He doesn't duck anybody. When um, Brian Bowles, one of the top guys right now, top two, in the, was not able to uh, compete, originally scheduled to fight here, they go out and they find the next best opponent overseas, the top five guy in the world, then Musaki. That way now he just constantly is able to increase his own notoriety and his own fame. And that is what they'll be fighting for tonight as we take a look at the tail of the tape for this Bantamweight world title bout. Miguel Angel Torres, the champion, 28 years of age, 5'9", 135 pounds. There you see the impressive reach at 76 inches. The challenger, Takeya Mizugaki, 25 years of age, 5'7", 135, and a 69 and a half inch reach. Folks, we are set to go in what should be an instant classic here in the WEC. Let's go inside.
inside the cage, the voice of the WEC, Joe Martinez, has the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, from the UIC Pavilion here in the Windy City of Chicago, Illinois, it is time for the main event of the evening. Five scheduled rounds for the WEC Bantamweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Tap Out, an expression of combat known worldwide, now available at tapout.com in association with but light, the difference is drinkability. Sanctioned by the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation, Director of Athletics, Ron Puccillo, and Executive Manager, Joel Camposano. The three judges scoring this bout at cage side on the 10-point must system, Sal Diamato, Kelvin Caldwell, and Matthew White. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, and the fighters are ready. For the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching live on Versus, Chicago, Illinois, make some noise! Are you ready? Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, the Muay Thai fighter. At 5 feet 7 inches tall, his official weight, 135 pounds. Tonight, he makes his WEC debut, bringing with him 11 victories, in two bouts, even fighting out of Kanagawa, Japan. He is the challenger to Keo Mizugaki. Next is the across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. His style, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Thai boxing. At five feet, nine inches tall, his official weight, 135 pounds. Professional record, outstanding. 35 victories, just one defeat, regarded as one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. The fighting pride of East Chicago, Indiana. The reigning, the defending, WEC Bantamweight champion of the world, began on here. Awesome. All right, y'all must have a good, clean fight. This is for a WEC title. I expect you to fight hard and clean. Touch gloves, go back to your gloves. Corners. So we are set to go in the Bantamweight division here. World Extreme, Cage Fighting Live on versus this for the belt. Frank, five round schedule. What are the chances it goes the distance? Very slim. in the white trunks, Mizugaki in the black trunks. Excellent position of uh, Miguel Torres' head. He's able to slip a couple of those punches. He's looked to have some pretty ill intent behind him. Mizugaki mixing up some combinations. Torres comes back now with a flurry. See if Torres starts attacking the legs of his attack. Reason being that, you know, he's throwing some heavy punches with those hands. But you need a good base to be able to do so. So if Miguel can start raining down some of the leg kicks and using a little tie boxing, he can start disrupting the balance. Nice jab. Miguel Torres probably has the best jab I've seen so far, you know, in MMA as far as effectiveness of range. He doesn't just use it as a range finder. He hurts a lot of people with it. Here was his jab that was actually able to break the cheekbone of Yashir Maeda in that bout in the third round. How do you prepare for a guy like Torres who attacks at so many different levels? You have to just go ahead and not let him be creative. Whatever kind of fight you want, fighters will just fight that way. Don't sit there and be elusive or with him and passive and try to sit there and figure out what he's going to do. Because if you sit there and you wait for Miguel, it's going to be a short night. This might be the best thing for Mr. Gaki. Stay out of these big flurries, keep it on his feet. Because if this thing gets going on the ground, 
chances are going to get really difficult for him to take advantage of. Right. The of Torres, and look at that. A slip and a hard fall for Torres onto his back. He looks fine. He did slip there, but he had the necktie, or uh, the tie clinch on uh, Mizugaki. That was a very good sign there that maybe Miguel's going to go ahead and pose that move some more. Reason being that uh, Mr. Zagman basically shoved him forward. And that took a lot of energy to get him off his neck. He didn't really use a proper technique. This is some punches there. Good, excellent head movement from Miguel Torres. Mr. Zaki, though, is, is not out of this at all. He's, those punches, if one of them lands, could be very painful. Switch kick from Miguel. Yoshiro Maeda, the last Japanese fighter that went three rounds with Torres. It was stopped in the third round by TKO, but it was a brutal fight. That actually had one of my votes for that fight of the year. I, yeah, I thought that yeah. was fight of the year. I think really. Again, excellent head movement. You know, I, I try to say a lot of fighters, they don't move their heads. Here's a great example. Miguel Torres, if he sat there and tried to block some of these punches, they would be very painful. Nice right hand, though, for Mizugaki. He was able to come over the top and land. He is coming forward, but Mizugaki now has Torres up. Torres, though, continues to ball. He has, he, has a, the head. he has a wizard tie right now and is able to control the wrist. 